in the same boat that a lot of you are in. I heard Rob talk about how he's got a whole notebook of ideas, and I thought that was crazy. And I want to say that that goes away, and I want to show you how. You probably have seen this a lot, right? You start writing, you start trying to produce a piece of content, and you completely freeze. You watch the Microsoft Word uh, cursor blink, and you slowly panic as you realize you have no ideas. Has anybody ever felt like that? Yeah, me too. However, I was able to fix this over time with a little bit of work, and I realized a few things, one of which was that I was looking at creativity backwards. So I'll give a little bit of uh, background where I come from. That'll explain it. This is the logo for my podcast. Um, as an aside, you'll note that nobody notices you've screwed up your aspect ratio where you look like a conehead if you've got a big enough beard. <laughs> I just noticed that the other day and it's been that way for three and a half years. And nobody cares. So it's, it's totally fine. You'll also notice a couple other things. Uh, one is, is we don't really look like designers. Uh, as a matter of fact, we look like we're selling duck calls. Um, I do not own a black turtleneck, a Macintosh computer, or those uh, square hipster glasses that are so cool. Um, those are considered to be necessary for creativity uh, by a lot of people. That's not really true. Uh, they are real handy, though, if you want to start a blood testing company that turns out to be fraudulent. Um, yeah, no, that was a cheap shot. Sorry. It was, just, it was just sitting there. So when we started this podcast, we basically went to a Mexican restaurant and drank two pitchers of margarita over a period of a couple of hours. Um, not going to say what kind of state our ideas were at the end, but we didn't really come up with a lot of good ones. I think there were 10 or 15. And that's a lot of work for not a whole lot of reward. Our current state now is that we have approximately 250 ideas in our Kanban board, and we have a weekly podcast, so that is five years worth of content if we come up with no more ideas. So how did we get from there to here? Well, one thing we learned uh, from the get-go is that creativity is not a stimulus. It's a response. And once you change that part of the equation, everything else gets easier. So here's how you do that. So you start Google searching. Uh, obviously, you're going to have to have a niche of some sort. And you search for you know, X sucks, where X is some part of a thing that you're doing. Uh, and I'll give an example. I have a uh, book on surviving whiteboard interviews. So I started out going, whiteboard interviews suck. And I found lots of people that agree with me, um, a surprising number of them on Hacker News, as a matter of fact. Or I hate whiteboard interviews. Or why are whiteboard interviews, and you just start you know, typing that into Google, and it'll give you all these options underneath. Uh, the next thing you do is you get a free keyword tool. Uh, I use keywords anywhere, but what you want is something that just dumps stuff to the right. Uh, these are alternative keywords for that topic. Write those down if any of those sound compelling and you kind of rinse and repeat. Uh, after that, start asking your audience about problems. You know you have some people there that you can ask. You could ask on Quora. If you don't have an audience, use somebody else's. Uh, the idea here is to get a rough idea of the pain points around a certain thing and get going. Now, you need to do this a few times on a few different subjects until you get five ideas that are not terrible. They don't have to be great. They just have to be like, okay, I'm not completely embarrassed to mention this. That's all you need. The next step is to start researching and research by creating. And what I mean by this is you write long form content, uh, you know, long blog posts, uh, write an ebook, uh, do a podcast, do a YouTube video, those kinds of things. Um, skyscraper posts are also really good for this. The idea here is that, okay, yes, I can use this on my website, but what this is really doing is it's giving you the price of entry for getting in front of an audience that can refine your ideas. Um, you'll be able to reuse this stuff later, of course, but that's what this is for initially. Once you're able to get in front of an audience, you leverage that content for feedback relentlessly. 
So you find user groups to speak in front of, you find charities. I speak regularly in front of a uh, software school in Nashville that is nonprofit. They love having me there. They don't realize that their question and answer session at the end is my market research. It's great. Now, once you've you know, done that a little bit, the next step is to actually start using the feedback. And you'll get a ton of stuff, especially if you have question and answer sessions. Um, your feedback that you get is how you refine your product idea or refine your content idea or refine whatever the thing is. Feedback is also really good for coming up with brand new ideas. Again, you're in front of an audience. This is how you get it into your pipeline, essentially. And sometimes people will hand you product ideas. My book on whiteboard interviews, some dude brought that up at a coding school. I don't even know the guy's name. And now I have a book. I have a book deal with A-Press now because of that dude, and I don't know who he is. That's pretty amazing. Now, when you get these ideas, hang on to every last one of them. Now, sort them out you know, later, but don't ever throw an idea away. Even if it's complete crap, you'll be surprised how frequently those ideas come back up and suddenly become very, very useful. Now, the last thing is, obviously, if you have an idea that has traction, you need to be relentlessly ex escalating on it. And what I mean by that is, is hey, if, if you're solving a pain point for people, get that in front of more people. Start getting more specificity. Start getting more details out of people. You know, pull ideas from other people. See where their pain is. Get that out there. And I talked a little bit faster than I thought that my southern drawl would let me do. So we're already on the final thoughts. Um, but I got a few things here. Uh, you will be creative eventually. If you follow this process relentlessly, creativity comes. Uh, it won't be tomorrow, uh, but it might be in a year. And it's, it's really more of a thought process of how do I change my pipeline for getting creative you know, creative ideas coming towards me instead of how do I go hunting for creative ideas. You're, you're hunt, you know, instead of hunting, you're farming. That works a lot better. Um, you'll need a lot of ideas. So just because an idea doesn't necessarily fit what you're doing right now, you still want to hang on to it. You need short form content. You need, you know, little, you know, gimmicky crap that you put in emails. You need stuff that, hey, this might make a good video, or hey, this might make a good conference talk. You're gonna need a large variety of stuff, and some of it you really can't foresee right now, but it'll come up. Dumb ideas are some of the best ideas. Uh, I had this stupid idea for a podcast episode that was called The Seven Deadly Sins of Programming. Right, I threw that on the Kanban board, it sat there for a year. One day I was kind of bored out of my mind, decided to write an outline, Saw that one, I was like, okay, this will be fun, it won't be that hard. Wrote it, it was one of our top downloaded episodes. Um, it was a completely stupid idea and I would thoroughly disavow it had it not worked. Um, you, you just never know. So like, the point there is that you don't really know how to evaluate an idea even though you think you do. Um, your audience evaluates the idea, that's not your job. Now, another thing is an audience of sufficient size will give you ideas. You know, MicroConf is good proof for that, by the way, um, because the pitch for this talk came out of conversations I had with other MicroConf attendees over the past, what, three years? Um, so that's a real thing. Uh, you should also keep the ability to write down ideas or record them. Uh, you know, I always keep a, a, a pad of paper by my bed I always have my phone. I have some way of recording an idea. Now, except for the restroom, I haven't figured that one out, and that may not be entirely sanitary, but everywhere else, you should be able to do that. The idea here is don't lose something once you've got it, because again, you can feed it back into this loop and it can become much more valuable. That's basically it. Thanks, Will.